so uh, this is a uh, case of an adolescent who presented with new onset headache and uh, seizures so as you can see uh, that uh, this is the flare sequence axial and this is the post contrast sequence and you can see that here uh, there are uh, cortical cortically based hyperinthesis areas uh, which are involving uh, the left hemisphere as well as the right hemisphere there are several hyperintense areas here as well and here as well so we can see that uh, there are multifocal regions of uh, cortically based hyper intensities which are involving uh, uh, predominantly uh, the left hemisphere the right hemisphere is also involved but uh, most uh, predominantly the left hemisphere and uh, there is uh, as you can see uh, that uh, there is mild leptomeningeal enhancement here uh, this is the leptomeningeal enhancement and which is most pronounced in the left opercular region and in these images you can see that this is the dwi and adc mapping and uh, yeah, you can see that there is a region of restricted diffusion here okay so there is also this restricted diffusion here as well this is hyper dense here and hypo on adc hyper intense on dwi hypo on adc so these uh, regions are actually showing diffusion restriction so uh, multifocal regions of cortical signal abnormality uh, along with the diffusion restriction so this is uh, pointing towards the diagnosis of cerebritis so the top differential will be cerebritis however we can also include ischemia or uh, infarcts uh, in this uh, list of differentials along with some contusions if uh, there is a trauma history contusions uh, vasculitis cortical tubers and milas that is mitochondrial encephalopathy with lactic acidosis and stroke like episodes milas can also be included in this uh, list of differentials so this is a case of cerebritis this is the next case so you can see that uh, this is uh, the, these are the mri images of a 45 year old woman who presented with seizures so this is the flare sequence and uh, this is the uh, post gadolinium sequence t1 with post gadolinium there is post contrast sequence and we can see that there are extensive bilateral flare uh, hyper intensities without significant mass effect and on the post contrast there is no significant enhancement in this lesions okay so on the flare we can see that there are extensive uh, regions of uh, hyper intensities uh, predominantly you know of uh, the, the white matter bilateral bilaterally i would say but predominantly on the left hemisphere the white matter is involved here hyper intensity is in the white matter and there is no enhancement on the post contrast sequence so confluent white matter signal abnormality in an adult uh, if the patient is uh, HIV so the first differential would be progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy that is PML other than that you can consider demyelinating process that is multiple sclerosis uh, in the differential neoplasm atypical infection any microvascular ischemic disease or any vasculitis uh, can also be considered in this case so this was the diagnose, uh, diagnosed case of uh, PML that is HIV patient next this is the case and these are the images young adult woman an acute renal failure uh, presenting with headache and visual changes so here you can see that this is flare sequence and it is showing multifocal regions of cortical and subcortical signal abnormality which is involving the bilateral occipital and the posterior temporal lobes okay posterior temporal and occipital lobes and uh, here you can see that uh, this is the dwi and this is the adc mapping and uh, we can see uh, that there are uh, subtle regions of restricted diffusion this is uh, hyper intense on dwi and it is hypo intense on adc so it's a uh, subtle uh, restricted diffusion in the left greater than the right posterior occipital lobe and uh, with adjacent uh, regions of t2 shine through okay so there are actually few regions of restricted diffusion here 
along with some adjacent regions of Tiru Shaidu. This is the restricted diffusion area. So, uh, considering this finding of posterior cortical or subcortical region of signal abnormality, our uh, top differential would be press, that is reversible hypertensive encephalopathy. Okay, so press or a reversible hypertensive encephalopathy is the main differential here. And uh, other than that, you can consider ischemia or infarct in the differential along with hypoglycemia or any seizure edema. Okay, so this is the next is uh, next. This is the case of uh, a two year old boy who presented with developmental delay. So these are uh, this is the axial flare sequence and uh, it is uh, showing symmetric hazy uh, regions of increased signal intensity. Uh, within the periatrial white matter. So this is that region periatrial white matter and you can see that there is quite symmetric uh, uh, haziness uh, of hyper intensity in this region. So considering the history of uh, that the patient is a young child and uh, this periatrial signal abnormality, so the main differential will be, will be of course uh, there is some demyelination process going on here. So it can be the diagnosis can be hypomyelination or delayed myelination. So any delayed myelination will be our top uh, differential. Other than that, you can consider demyelinating disease in the differential, any metabolic disease um, or uh, uh, neonatal hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy or any atypical perivascular uh, spaces. They can also be considered in the differential. Next. This is a case of uh, an eight-year-old boy who presented with headache, fever, altered mental status and diffuse petechial rash. So these are the images. Now, as you can see, uh, the T2-weighted sequence, uh, the T2-weighted image, this is T2-weighted image and this is flare. So, uh, and in the, this is DWI. So you can see that there are numerous foci of uh, increased signal intensity along the perivascular spaces here along the perivascular spaces okay and uh, here uh, corpus callosum and uh, deep gray matter as well deep gray matter is involved here as well okay so there are numerous foci of increased signal intensity along the perivascular uh, spaces and the corpus callosum and the deep gray nuclei here on the DWI as well, you can see that these are the hyperintense areas showing that there is a diffusion restriction here as well here. So numerous foci of perivascular and deep gray or white matter signal abnormality, uh, they point towards uh, the diagnosis. You can, uh, considering this imaging feature, this imaging characteristic, this imaging finding is very typical for cryptococcal infection. So, cryptococcal infection should be the top differential and uh, other than that, uh, Lyme disease and uh, Rocky Mountain spotted fever uh, can also be considered in the differential. Next uh, is, uh, this is the case of, uh, uh, well, the history has been withheld here and these are the only images that are provided. So, you can see that this is the T2-weighted MRI and this is the uh, DWI sequence and uh, there is an ovoid region of uh, increased signal intensity within the spleen of the corpus callosum and the DWI is showing that there is correspondingly increased signal intensity in the same region as well as additional lesions are noted here at the right insular gray white matter junction and the medial right thalamus okay this is the medial right thalamus so you can see that there is a lesion here and there's a lesion here another lesion here right insular gray white matter here these two lesions and then this lesion in the medial thalamus and this is in the um, splenium of the corpus callosum so uh, the corpus callosal signal abnormality and uh, you can see that there are multiple lesions here as well so um, the top differential, if there is history of trauma, so we will consider the top differential to be diffuse axonal injury. Okay, diffuse axonal injury uh, should be given top priority if there is a history of any uh, road traffic accident or any trauma history. Uh, 
Other than that, you can consider any demyelinating uh, process like multiple sclerosis or ADAM, um, also uh, a neoplasm like a GBM or lymphoma can also be considered like multifocal, uh, multicentric GBM or any uh, considering this location of the corpus callosum. Okay, so the, the basically the key finding is that this is a corpus callosal signal abnormality. So we will keep in mind the differentials of the corpus callosal uh, diseases. So the demyelinating process or uh, GBM or lymphoma, they basically involve the corpus callosum. So that is why they were considered in the differential. Also any ischemia or edema or any toxic demyelination process like chronic alcoholism uh, or marchia fava bignami disease. Uh, so these can also be considered in the differentials. Next, uh, this is the case of uh, a five-year-old boy presenting with developmental delay and adult mental status and these are the images provided so we can see that this is the uh, axial flare sequence and uh, we can see uh, that there are uh, symmetric regions of signal abnormality involving the uh, medial cerebellar hemispheres or nuclei and uh, the cerebellar peduncles and the brainstem as well here you can see that brainstem is involved a pons and pawns okay so this is pawns and uh, uh, this is the uh, brain stem so this here you can see that this is uh, this hyper intensity is noted in the brain stem and the medial cerebellar peduncles uh, or medial cerebellar hemispheres also this uh, there is hyper intensity in the pawns as well However, there is no significant mass effect in these lesions. These lesions are not causing any significant mass effect. So, diffuse cerebellar and brainstem signal abnormality in a child. This is the basic imaging finding here. The patient is a child and uh, there are diffuse, you know, cerebellar here, cerebellar and brainstem and bones abnormalities. So, signal abnormality. So, the top differential should be any metabolic disease like Lee syndrome okay Lee syndrome is the top differential here other than that you can consider rhombencephalitis or in demyelinating process and demyelinating disease like Adam or infiltrating a neoplasm like diffuse infiltrating pontine glioma and uh, any metabolic disease like maple syrup urine disease or neurofibromatosis one can also be considered and this is the uh, next case uh, of a young adult woman presenting with seizures and these are the images. So as you can see that uh, on the axial uh, T2 weighted MRI and also this is the flare sequence, you can see that there is a relatively uh, well-defined region of increased cortical and uh, subcortical signal intensity uh, within the left frontal lobe. Okay, So this is the left uh, frontal lobe. And uh, this corresponding region is, uh, it is uh, here you can see that it is hypo intense on T1 and uh, it is uh, uh, showing mild enhancement after uh, giving contrast. So this is post contrast sequence, it's showing mild enhancement, it is hypo intense on T1 and it is uh, hyper intense on T2 along with uh, um, correspondingly hyper intensity on, in the flare sequence. So. Uh, Considering this key imaging finding of solitary region of cortical and subcortical signal abnormality in an adult patient, so the top uh, differential should be a low-grade astrocytoma. Okay, so low-grade astrocytoma is the top diagnosis here. Other than that, you can set in uh, the list of differentials like ischemia or infarct or any neoplasm as we have already said uh, that astrocytoma is, should be the top differential. Other than that, cerebritis or contusion or seizure edema can also be included. Next case. Uh, so this is a four weeks old boy uh, who presented uh, with failure to thrive. So this is the non-contrast uh, CT scan axial section, uh, which is showing diffuse cerebral edema here. Here you can see diffuse cerebral edema with loss of gray white matter differentiation. And also there is sulcal effacement sulcal effacement bilaterally. Uh, there is a uh, hyperdense uh, subdural hemorrhage, uh, which is uh, noted here. The, this is the subdural hemorrhage, uh, which is noted along the uh, posterior uh, here, uh, 
also this is the subdural hemorrhage so along the posterior aspect of the fox and the tentorium uh, on the left side we can see that there is this subdural hemorrhage here the subdural hemorrhage so considering this uh, clinic uh, imaging picture of diffuse cerebral edema the diffuse cerebral edema in an infant so the uh, top diagnosis should definitely be um, uh, you know uh, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy but as you can see that there is a subdural hematoma as well here okay so there is subdural hematoma so this uh, finding of subdural hematoma changes the diagnosis altogether and you should consider non-accidental trauma as your top differential okay so whenever you find a subdural hematoma in an infant and um, obviously if there is uh, no typical uh, you know history of any trauma or anything so you should definitely consider non-accidental trauma as your top differential other than that again then you can consider because of this diffuse cerebral edema you can consider hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy uh, um, and any metabolic disease process uh, can also be considered in the differential however in this case the because of the subdural hemorrhage uh, the uh, top differential or the top diagnosis will be non-accidental trauma so this is a case of non-accidental trauma next case this is a young adult man who presented with altered mental status and uh, these are the images now you can see that this is the detubated MRI and uh, this is the post contrast sequence and you can see that there is a triangular shaped region of increased uh, signal on T2 and decreased signal uh, on, uh, on T1 uh, within the central pons okay it is located within the central pons and there is no enhancement in this lesion okay so this lesion is this triangular shaped lesion within the central pons and uh, there is no enhancement in this lesion and this is t2 hyper intense t1 hyper intense uh, not showing any enhancement so considering this focal pontine signal abnormality the top differential whenever there is pons involvement so we always give uh, the diagnosis of osmotic demyelination or central pontine myelinolysis as our top diagnosis in uh, the case of uh, pontine uh, signal abnormality uh, also if it is so uh, centrally shaped uh, centrally uh, placed and triangular in shape and it is located in the center and showing no enhancement the patient is an adult so this is a very typical picture of central pontine myelinolysis uh, however you can consider ischemia any microvascular ischemic disease uh, in the in the differential also any demyelinating process or uh, vascular malformation like uh, capillary telangiectasia etc if it is t1 hyper intense of course if there was blood in it then there should be hemorrhage in it then it should be t1 hyper intense so uh, you can consider uh, um, uh, cavernous malformation as well in the differential and brain stem glioma and brain stem encephalitis should also be considered next is uh, this is the case of uh, a 10 year old boy presenting with new onset of ataxia and uh, these are the images now as you can see that this is the uh, coronal flare sequence and um, this is the t1 weighted mri coronal sequence now you can see that there are uh, uh, confluent regions here confluent regions of increased uh, signal intensity on flare and uh, these regions are showing hyper intensity on t1 weighted mri and they are predominantly involving the uh, subcortical uh, white matter of the cerebellar hemispheres okay and uh, the post contrast sequences are not shown here but it's given in the history that there was no enhancement in these lesions uh, so considering this main finding uh, of uh, you know the diffuse abnormal cerebellar signal so the top differential uh, should be cerebellitis cerebellitis uh, considering that it is hyper intense on flare and it is hypo intense on t1 and showing no enhancement on post contrast so the top diagnosis should be cerebellitis other than that again any demyelinating process like ms or adam uh, can be considered any infiltrating neoplasm can also be considered next case 
these are the MRI images of uh, a young girl who is presenting with developmental delay and uh, this is the axial T2 weighted MRI and this is the flare sequence and you can see that there are uh, here uh, bilateral subcortical cysts within the anterior temporal lobes and uh, along with it there is surrounding gliosis. Now you can see that this is the region of uh, the abnormality that is there are bilateral subcortical cysts within the anterior temporal lobes and this white region is the surrounding gliosis okay so considering this uh, imaging picture of subcortical cysts in a child so the top differential will be megalencephalic leukoencephalopathy megalencephalic leukoencephalopathy with subcortical cysts uh, however you can also place cmv infection in the differential cytomegalovirus infection or uh, cadacel as well in the differential next is uh, this is the case of a young man who was found down okay so it's found unconscious so this is the uh, flare mri sequence axial scan and it is showing symmetric increased signal intensity involving the thalami with uh, very little mass effect okay so this is symmetric increased signal intensity involving uh, the bilateral thalami also you can see that this is the dwi and this is the adc sequence and you can see that there is correspondingly uh, diffusion restriction here uh, by the increased signal uh, on dwi and uh, hyper intense signal on adc uh, we can see that there is diffusion restriction here so what's the top diagnosis uh, in this case uh, bilateral uh, thalamic signal abnormality in a young adult patient who was found down so the basic uh, diagnosis should be infarct and the infarct is again uh, in the infarct is of venous etiology okay so any deep venous uh, infarct we can consider that this is uh, you can say that this could be artery of percheron infarct okay uh, because uh, it supplies the thalami bilaterally so uh, it could be uh, in fact secondary to the artery of Percheron uh, uh, occlusion or thrombosis or it could be the deep veins, uh, the, the, the deep veins supply this area. So this in fact could be secondary to the internal cerebral vein uh, occlusion. Okay, so this is basically the diagnosis of infarct secondary to whatever uh, that will be decided on angiography and further imaging uh, uh, imaging tests uh, the infiltrating neoplasm could also be considered in the differential uh, uh, viral encephalitis can also be considered osmotic uh, demyelination or vernic encephalopathy or adam can also be considered in the differential next uh, this is the case of um, an eight year old child uh, otherwise uh, the history otherwise is withheld but uh, this is the imaging picture so this is a flare sequence uh, which is showing symmetric uh, hyper intense signals in the uh, posterior lateral putamen here and ventral thalami uh, as well as within the uh, bilateral insula okay this is the insular region so you can see that there are hyper intensities in the uh, posterior lateral putamen and ventral thalami and um, bilateral insula so increased two to signal in basal ganglia or thalami in a child what could be the top differential hypoxic ischemic insult okay hypoxic ischemic insult or uh, secondary to near drowning other than that uh, you can uh, consider wilson disease any metabolic disorder like milas etc and connectaris osmotic demyelination or uh, nf1 can also be considered however the top diagnosis should be hypoxic ischemic insult next case this is uh, an adult man who presented with altered mental status and this is the only image provided so this is a flare sequence uh, axial section mri uh, at the level of deep uh, gray matter structures and it is showing symmetric regions of increased uh, signal intensity involving the uh, bilateral thalami and uh, lentiform nuclei caudate and uh, subinsular white matter and there are uh, foci of increased signal within the here insular cortex on the left side and the operculum operculum on the right side so this is the picture and uh, 
considering this key finding of uh, increased T2 signal intensity symmetrically in both basal ganglia and thalami in an adult patient. So the top uh, differential should be viral encephalitis. Other than that, you can add uh, hypoxic ischemic injury or uh, osmotic demyelination or Wilson's disease or Kruzfeldt-Jakob disease uh, in the differentials. Here, this is a case of an adult woman who is presented uh, with the headaches and neurologic deficits. So these are the uh, imaging sequences provided. So this is the GRI sequence. These Both of these are axial GRI sequences. And uh, here, all three of them, they are GRI sequences. And they are showing that there are numerous foci or uh, foci, whatever you want to call them, the numerous foci of susceptibility, that is hypo-intensity, uh, with involvement of the, uh, here you can see, with involvement of the gray-white matter junction. Okay, and uh, along the superior aspect here, along the superior aspect of the uh, splenium of the corpus callosum on the right side. Okay, and uh, also there are regions of increased signal visualized uh, posterior to the left frontal here, here left frontal uh, centrum semi ovale lesion okay and this is the sub insular region lesion this is the lesion in the insular region this is in the centrum semi ovale and uh, okay so multiple foci or foci of susceptibility hypo intensity that is blooming we can say uh, blooming foci um, on GRI sequence or SWI sequence. So they point towards the diagnosis of uh, basically vasculitis. However, uh, you can consider hypertension in the differential, diffuse axonal injury, vasculitis, multiple cavernous malformations, cerebral amyloid angiopathy, and hematogenous spread of the tumor or infection can also be considered. So chronic hypertension usually results in microhemorrhages within the putamen and thalamus and uh, bones and cerebellar hemispheres. So this should always be considered secondary to chronic infection or any vasculitis or DAI. They can all result in this typical imaging picture. Next case, this is a 50-year-old woman uh, who has presented with gait abnormality, gait abnormality. So this is basically zoomed in view or the cone down uh, view of the uh, T2 weighted MRI axial scan and you can see that there are symmetric hyper intensities within the posterior lentiform nuclei. So this is the symmetric areas of hyper intensities within the posterior lentiform nuclei and uh, considering this uh, uh, imaging picture as the key finding you, uh, what should be the top diagnosis? Uh, neurodegenerative disorder or Parkinson's disease should be the top diagnosis. Other than that, decreased T2 signal in basal ganglia, um, the differentials can include normal aging or uh, any cause of basal ganglia calcification and uh, neurodegenerative disorders like Halliwardin Sparks disease can also be considered, any demyelinating process like MS or Adam and hemochromatosis as well. Next case, uh, this is an adult patient uh, with chronic neurological issues. So this is the axial T1 weighted MRI and you can see that there are symmetric increased uh, T1 signal intensities within the uh, globus pallidi bilaterally. Okay, Symmetric means of course bilaterally. Uh, so uh, within this uh, globus pallidi also here you can see that in the dentate nuclei there is this hyper intensity areas, there is hyper intensities within the dentate nuclei as well. In the sagittal uh, T1 weighted MRI, uh, you can see that uh, there is this increased uh, signal intensity within the globus pallidus. And uh, a surgical cavity is partially visualized here, here within the left cerebellar hemisphere. So, what should be the top diagnosis, what should be the short top differential in the, this uh, case of symmetric increased T1 
T1 signal symmetric increase, T1 hyperintensity in basal ganglia. So, the diagnosis is uh, basal ganglia mineralization uh, post-radiation therapy because we can see that there was a surgical cavity here. So, there must be radiation involved here. Uh, this could be secondary to any tumor uh, post-radiation therapy. So, the, the basal ganglia have mineralized post-radiation uh, therapy. Also, you can say that the, there is basal ganglia calcification or mineralization involved here or manganese deposition or hypoxic ischemic or anoxic encephalopathy or any new neurodegenerative disorder uh, like PCAN or Hollywood and sports disease or neurofibromatosis type 1 so, or connectaris. They all can be put in the differentials list. Next case, uh, this is uh, an adult man presenting with uh, muscle pains. And uh, this is a axial CT scan showing bilateral uh, symmetric calcifications involving the lentiform nuclei and posterior thalami. Okay, so these are the posterior thalami calcifications. These are the bilateral lentiform nuclei calcifications. So basal ganglia calcifications in an adult patient. Uh, what could be the diagnosis? The top diagnosis is uh, obviously any endocrine process, any endocrine disease process like hyperparathyroidism. Okay, and uh, then in the differentials you can put senescent calcifications senescent calcifications like calcifications uh, related to aging uh, because they are incidental and they are even considered a normal part of the aging process. Uh, also, any metabolic or endocrine disease as I have already mentioned that hypothyroidism or hyperparathyroidism or any pseudo-hypo or pseudo-pseudo-hypothyroidism and all these could be included in the differentials. Uh, any ischemic process or infectious injury like severe uh, hypoxic ischemic injury uh, can also affect these areas. Uh, but it will be in the last of the differentials. The top differential should be any endocrine uh, process, disease process like hyperparathyroidism or hypothyroidism or pseudo pseudo hyperparathyroidism and things like that. Or they can also be treatment related. They are like uh, the patient was given some radiations or the patient was given chemotherapy. So, they can be post-treatment or post-radiation as well, uh, these calcifications. And also, in a very rare uh, case, far disease should also be considered. Next is uh, a patient uh, who is a young child with history of developmental delay and seizures. This is the case. As you can see, that this is the axial CT scan and there are multiple periventricular multiple periventricular calcifications in a subependymal distribution. Also, you can see that there is ventricular megaly and uh, also uh, here you can see that there is uh, an, an additional calcification along the uh, posterior aspect of the right globe. So, this is the imaging picture that is periventricular calcifications in an infant or child. So, what should be the top diagnosis? The top diagnosis should be tuberous sclerosis considering the subependymal nodules and this retinal hematoma. This could be the retinal hematoma and these are the subependymal nodules. So, tuberous sclerosis is the uh, top diagnosis. Other than that, uh, periventricular calcifications uh, consider uh, torch infections like CMV infection, rubella, syphilis, toxoplasmosis, RPs etc. Tuberous sclerosis infection, prior germinal matrix hemorrhage can also calcify and uh, so these are the differentials but uh, the main diagnosis in this case is tuberous sclerosis. Next case, uh, this is a young adult woman with history of headache and seizures. These are the pictures. Now, this is the axial CT scan. Uh, all of these three are the, are the images uh, axial CT scans and they are showing multiple punctate, punctate or punctuate parenchymal calcifications uh, which are involving uh, here as well. So, these calcifications are involving the gray white matter junction and the deep gray matter as well. This is located in the deep gray matter and this calcification and the other this calcification is located in the uh, gray white matter junction. So, considering this key finding of uh, 
parenchymal, multiple parenchymal calcifications. So the top diagnosis, uh, what could be the top diagnosis? So any infection or any disseminated infection like neurocysticercosis should be the top uh, diagnosis, neurocysticercosis. Other than that, cavernous malformations or cavernomas, metastasis or uh, treatment related like, like secondary to radiation or chemotherapy and any endocrine disease process or again tuberous sclerosis can also be considered if uh, they are involving uh, the subependymal regions or any subependymal nodules are noted. So this is a case of uh, disseminated infection uh, that is neurocysticercosis. Next case, this is a young girl who presented with altered mental status and headache. So this, uh, these are flare sequences and uh, you can see that uh, there are uh, diffuse uh, diffuse abnormal increased uh, signal intensity uh, throughout the subarachnoid spaces uh, overlying the cerebral hemispheres okay and uh, hazy increased uh, periatrial here periatrial uh, signal intensity corresponds to the uh, perivascular spaces which are not uh, optimally shown however you can see that uh, basically the the abnormality in this images is uh, this uh, diffuse abnormal increased signal intensity uh, throughout the subarachnoid spaces uh, which are overlying the cerebral hemispheres so increased flare signal increased subarachnoid flare signal the top differential what could be the top differential slow or collateral venous flow in a patient with the moya moya so you can consider that uh, there is slow or collateral uh, venous flow also, you can put subarachnoid hemorrhage in the differential, meningitis or leptomeningeal carcinomatosis, also hyperoxygenation or MR artifact or uh, a slow or collateral venous flow can be considered. Next case, these are the images uh, provided. Uh, the patient is a six-year-old girl uh, with spastic quadriplegia. So, this is the axial T1, this is T2 and uh, this is flare sequence and you can see that there are there is a um, symmetric loss within the uh, periventricular white matter, okay, uh, posteriorly uh, with the ex vacu dilatation of the lateral ventricles uh, which shows the irregular margins here, okay. So, there is this ex vacu dilatation of the lateral ventricles and uh, these uh, there are irregular margins uh, shown here and also there is increased uh, t2 and uh, you can see that there is this region is hyper intense on t2 and as well as on flare sequence you can see that there is peri atrial hyper intensity in uh, uh, on flare and on t2 sequences uh, which is consistent with gliosis, which is very much consistent with gliosis. So, periventricular volume loss and ventricular megaly with irregular margins is the key finding here. Uh, what could be the top differential? Oh, there's only one differential here, and that is periventricular leukomalacia. So, these uh, imaging findings are very typical for periventricular leukomalacia. This is a case of periventricular leukomalacia in the setting of diffuse hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. Uh, the pattern and degree of insult depends upon the status of brain maturity or the severity of insult and the duration of insult. So, these things can happen secondary to uh, the diffuse hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. Next case, uh, these are the images of a 59-year-old man presenting with altered mental status. So, you can see that uh, on the axial flare inversion recovery images, uh, that is axial flare sequences you can see that there are symmetric abnormal increased signal intensity here involving the medial thalami bilaterally uh, also uh, this is involving the uh, tectal plate and the peri aqueductal it is involving the tectal plate and the peri aqueductal gray matter and uh, the hypothalamus and mammillary bodies okay is involving the hypothalamus and uh, mammillary bodies as well here okay hypothalamus mammillary bodies and uh, this is the medial thalami which is giving hyper intense signal 
So the key diagnosis, the key imaging finding here is symmetric signal abnormality within the medial thalami in the periaqueductal gray matter and the mammillary bodies. So the top uh, diagnosis or the only diagnosis I would say here is of Wernicke's encephalopathy. So it is a disorder caused by thymine deficiency and uh, Wernicke's encephalopathy or Wernicke's encephalopathy, whatever you want to call it, is the only diagnosis here. Next case, this is uh, a 14-year-old boy who is presenting with the complex partial seizures. So, this is the axial sequence of flare, flare MRI sequence axial. This is the detuvated uh, coronal sequence and uh, this is the magnified coronal sequence detuvated. So you can see that there is increased signal intensity and volume loss within the uh, left mesial temporal lobe, okay. And uh, here as well, the atrophy of the left mesial temporal lobe or hippocampus is best shown in this routine coronal T2-weighted sequence and this magnified T2-weighted sequence, okay. So there's atrophy of the left mesial temporal lobe or hippocampus. Here, compare it with this hippocampus. This is a healthy looking hippocampus and this is a trophic hippocampus. So in a patient, uh, 14 year old patient uh, showing atrophy or increased T2 flare signal intensity within the mesial temporal lobe, the only diagnosis should be mesial temporal sclerosis. So mesial temporal sclerosis is the uh, one and only diagnosis here in this case. Next case. These are the images of a young adult man presenting uh, with known subacute infarct. So as you can see that uh, on the axial flare sequence, uh, there is a subacute infarct uh, which is centered within the posterior limb of the right internal capsule and anterior thalamus as well as there is increased signal uh, which is uh, extending along the descending corticospinal tracts here. Okay, it is the sig along the corticospinal tracts and uh, along the yeah here along the sending uh, corticospinal tracts and the pyramidal tract of the medulla here. This is the signal abnormality here as well, and uh, there is no associated volume loss at the time of imaging. Okay, so this is the signal abnormality in the medulla and. Uh, this is the signal abnormality in the posterior limb of the internal capsule and anterior thalamus. So considering this imaging finding, this key imaging finding of increased signal intensity along the descending tracts with corresponding parenchymal abnormality, the only diagnosis here is of valerian degeneration. That is, uh, valerian degeneration is actually the uh, ipsilateral degeneration of the descending exons or white matter tract secondary to a more proximal neuronal or exonal injury. And the infarcts are the most common cause of uh, valerian degeneration, uh, followed by hemorrhage and tumors. Next case, uh, this is a 65-year-old man uh, presenting with prior history of prior stroke. These are the images. Now you can see that on the axial CT scan, uh, there is a remote infarct with the encephalomalacia involving the right cerebral cortex. Um, also the lentiform nuclei and the deep white matter. The axial CT scan uh, through the posterior fossa reveals very subtle volume loss, a very subtle volume loss and a small infarct here within the left cerebellar hemisphere. Okay. Now these are the corresponding uh, PET sequences and uh, they show decreased metabolism uh, within the right cerebral hemisphere and the left cerebellar hemisphere okay so these are these are the key imaging findings here cerebral insult with ipsilateral cerebral and uh, contralateral uh, cerebral volume loss and decreased metabolism as well so the diagnosis here is of crossed cerebellar diachysis crossed cerebellar diachysis and it refers to the cerebellar volume loss, which is due to an insult involving the contralateral cerebrum. 
okay so this is called cross cerebellar diachysis and the pet always reveals hypermetabolism in the involved cerebral hemisphere and contralateral cerebellum so this is a case of cross cerebellar diachysis next case this is adult man presenting with acute onset of left sided neurological deficits these are the images now you can see that this is the axial ct scan and there is a, a hyperdense right mca sign noted here uh, normal attenuation is noted in the contralateral mca and the basilar artery however this mca is hyperdense axial image uh, more superiorly uh, in uh, stroke or ischemic windows is showing that there is loss of gray white matter differentiation uh, involving the right insular region and the operculum and there is mild sulcal effacement as well the maximum intensity projection uh, from a ct angiogram here is showing that there is occlusion of the right uh, proximal mid right mca there is occlusion of this proximal mid right mca and now coming towards these uh, perfusion weighted images so you can see that uh, this is the axial uh, time to drain image and uh, this is the cerebral blood flow and this is the blood volume image and you can see uh, that uh, there were these are images from uh, a different patient uh, but uh, the patient had similar clinical presentation and uh, it reveals a central region uh, of significantly decreased cerebral blood flow and uh, increased time to drain uh, with uh, a smaller region of uh, moderately decreased blood volume involving the pro uh, posterior right uh, mca vascular territory and this is surrounded by regions of moderately decreased blood flow and increased time to drain uh, with minimal uh, decrease in blood volume so there is decrease in blood volume and uh, there is moderately uh, decreased blood flow and uh, there is increased time to drain here so these are the images uh, of uh, these are the perfusion imaging uh, with an ischemic penumbra which is surrounding a central infarct so the key diagnosis of course is stroke here however uh, the perfusion weighted images are basically showing that uh, there is ischemic penumbra here there is a central infarct however there is ischemic penumbra next case of um, a young boy with acute onset of altered mental status and loss of consciousness now you can see that uh, on the axial ct images uh, there is a diffuse cerebral edema there is diffuse cerebral edema diffuse cerebral edema with hyperdensity throughout the brain parenchyma and uh, there is effacement of the extra axial csf spaces with relatively increased density of the uh, basal cisterns relatively okay this relatively increased density of the basal cisterns uh, however there is effacement of the extra axial csf spaces so considering this key imaging finding of diffuse cerebral edema with hyperdense basal cisterns so the only diagnosis should be uh, pseudo subarachnoid hemorrhage which uh, refers to the hyperdense appearance of the basal cisterns in the setting of diffuse cerebral edema and uh, so the only diagnosis here is of pseudo subarachnoid hemorrhage